Gary, over your career, you've been very disciplined about where you invest, and yeah. you've almost exclusively invested in the DC metro area. Why is that, and what's, what's different about DC? Yeah. You know, everything is a balance of risk and return. And I've been out there signing on loans greater than my assets from the time I was 22 to the time I was in my late 50s. And today, uh, you can't build projects like H Street and Skyland in a entrepreneurial setting where every project is its separate LLC without somebody guaranteeing these loans. And that's the place that I'm at. And I'm willing to do that and willing to take that risk. But I always want to balance that risk with that return. So the first thing I decided a long time ago is that I'm not going out of the Washington metropolitan area. Back early in my career, where it was difficult, and it's always difficult to find the opportunity. People say it's so difficult in Washington to find the right opportunity. So yes, I have one in the south side of Baltimore and I have one in just outside, but everything else is Washington. And I, if someone shows me opportunities outside, uh, I don't want to look at them and, and basically throw those away. And that's because here in Washington, in balancing that risk, I know where all the road networks are now and I know where they're going. I know the demographics of every area of the, of the city. And, and every suburban area. I know every master plan and comprehensive plan and rezoning that's occurring for the future competition. Uh, I know all the politicians from the point of view of making sure if we need a special exception. We give to every charity or school or baseball club because shopping center owners should be doing that in this and in the market that they live in as well. And uh, that's what we do here. So I have a, a balance. I, I don't know the owner of every shopping center over probably 70,000 feet or that it's for sale but I probably know every shopping center in this entire market that's over 70,000 feet on what corner it is and what its competition is because in driving around and traveling and making sure I know it, I could never do that in more than one uh, city. So what that does is it gives me a different balance of risk and return. But I've got really good at it. How, how to create value by doing what I do, whether it's tenant mix or whatever relates to retail in one market, but Washington has always been big enough for anything I've ever wanted to do. And with the stability of the military and the government, good or bad, I've never seen this city have the, have the ups and downs that other cities have had over my 44-year career. Tell us, you know, what's well, changed, what hasn't changed in retail? Well, of course, you know, every investor that I talk to, the first thing they ask about is, should I be investing in retail? What's happening with retail? They're all worried about, of course, the internet. I like to generally start off by saying that Amazon didn't buy Whole Foods to close them. They bought Whole Foods to figure out how to build their sales, whether it's through deliveries from the stores or a pickup or what. But they surely, retail bricks and mortar is not disappearing. And every time there's conflict or problems, somebody who runs and is afraid, uh, everything's balanced with risk, uh, maybe loses more than they should. And if somebody really understands the business, maybe they, they can actually take advantage of that. And yeah, of course th things have changed. I mean, we talk now about experiential retail. We talk about um, like the last project that we just purchased, which was the village of Leesburg a couple of weeks ago, 550,000 square feet of retail anchored by Wegmans. But it has a, a 12 screen movie theater. But we're increasing it to 14 screens and we're making more food and more entertainment and, and nicer seats so that people have a better desi desire to go there. But we also have a bowling alley and we also have a trampoline park and we have lots of things that you can't do online. LA Fitness. So we have lots of different reasons to be there. The retailers that understand the internet and understand bricks and mortar are being successful where that one and one equals three. And the ones that aren't, they're not. We are approximately 96% leased and over 11 million square feet of shopping centers and about 80 properties. And you can't be much more leased than that with the churn that always occurs with uh, 1,650 tenants. We are leasing more retail than anyone in the market. We, and because we represent over 80 retailers and because we do retail in over 100 high-rise buildings, we know the rents and the vacancies across every suburban project every urban project and every mixed-use project in Washington except malls, which we're not in. That knowledge helps us to be able to properly negotiate with tenants, even if we can't get percentage rent. Gary, let's talk about Skyland. You, you refer to that as your most satisfying project. A lot of us have heard of Skyland. We, we've seen the effort put forth. 
Why is it the most satisfying project for you? Well, you, you talk about it most satisfying as if it's complete and it's <laughs> over and it's finished and it's operating. Uh, but we're, we're still a long way from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but back uh, in about 2000, in 2001, I was, for the Trade Association, giving a certain amount of speeches and talking to a lot of people about we, as developers, why we should go back into the inner cities, not just Washington, D.C. Why retailers and developers, while it's complicated, actually can make money in developing in our inner cities. And I was asked by the District of Columbia to put a team together and make a proposal for a project called Skyland. And Skyland is um, in Ward 7, uh, east of the river, uh, across the street from Ward 8 on Good Hope, Alabama, and Naylor Avenue. And it's about 40, it was about 43 separate parcels from about 18 different owners. And you can imagine a shopping center that can never be well maintained when everybody has a different sliver that they're actually responsible for. And uh, I was selected with the team I put together of uh, Chris Smith from WC Smith and uh, three community groups. And our partners are still the same partners from 17 years ago when we were selected. And we went uh, through, and I've been in many, many meetings in churches and schools and people's homes. And I have got a feeling of, of what is missing in Ward 7. And, and it is complicated. But we're going to build something and we're going to offer the services at the price and the choice that everybody deserves. And that part of the city um, has missed some of the other opportunities that other parts of the city uh, has, has been able to have. And when I look back on my um, career, because I say that, as sometimes I say, how many shopping centers could I have bought or built in the suburbs if I had not invested this money over 17 years and all this time? And surely uh, many. But when I look in the future and I look back at what is going to be most satisfying for me, it's going to be these relationships that I've built with all of these people that have become friends of mine and being able to build something truly special in the Skyland Town Center. And we are now under construction. We did have a Walmart. It took over two and a half years to negotiate a lease with them. And we were under, we were under construction for land development and they pulled out. It took us a year to figure out how to redesign it, uh, refinance it and now we're under construction with the first building on uh, 263 rental apartments, over 85,000 feet of retail, anchored only by a CVS, but maybe 25 other tenants, and we will continue and we'll finish it. And I have told many people in that part of the city that, I, first of all, I'm never retiring, but if I ever was going to retire, I'm not retiring until it gets up, mm -hmm. operating, uh, fully built out and successful. Now on H Street, there's a shopping center that I think you've owned for a long time. And that's, there's a big development happening there. So tell us a little bit about what's happening on H Street. Well, you know, sometimes you, uh, you develop or buy something and an area changes to the positive and sometimes it changes not to the positive. So back in 1984, when I'm just starting business, I have an opportunity um, and I make a presentation and with another partner, uh, we get selected in a public-private partnership uh, to build a one-story shopping center of 33,000 feet on 8th and H Northeast. And 8th and H Northeast was very dangerous. We would not allow a woman to lease space in the middle of the day on that shopping center. We built, it's a two-acre parcel, 87,000 square feet, a perfect rectangle, that the government took back, the district government, knocked these townhouses down, and then put out an RFP, or a request for proposal, and, and I was selected. And we built a one-story shopping center there that we opened in 1987. And, on, and I know that I purchased Fee Simple, the 87,000 square feet, for about $1.20 a foot, a little over $110,000 for that piece of ground there. Things changed. The district made a, a commitment to have their Great Streets program. They decided to go back, because H Street was one of the main shopping streets back in the early 60s, before the riots. And they made a commitment to put in the monies. They made a commitment to make that the first trolley line that we, we have operating in the city. And we were involved in the rezoning, uh, master planning of all of H Street um, back over many years. 
and we had the opportunity to rezone it to what it is today right now, uh, 417 rental apartments, over 44,000 feet of retail, about a $200 million project, three levels of underground parking. And what I enjoyed most about it was the district came to me and asked me if I would zone that parcel. Mm -hmm. And I said I would. Mm -hmm. And in all those meetings that I had with the district there and with the community, I went to all those meetings. And I talked to all those people and, I, and that lived around there. And, I, and we together decided what should be built, how it should look. And when I went in for the rezoning, we had only people in support because we had done all that work ahead of time in order to build and get that zoning and now build what we're building. And we're on the construction.